Jen is all about his creeps, right? Well, Super disagrees. We're gonna see here a game of him doing a very crazy skill build. He's going to max his penitence and max holy persuasion last. Is this just because he's not good at micro? Is this an actually viable gen build? Let's explore. My holiness deepens. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. The beginning here is quite normal. He has Divine Favor, that's very normal level 1. And they're just trading here and very importantly he hits the Shadow Shaman, not the Centaur. Because Centaur has his return, or he tell he is. You don't want to give him too many stacks and also you just do yourself too much damage if you hit him. So it's better to just hit this Shadow Shaman who is the much softer target. Curry is coming here and Super cancels one of his attacks. And some nice body blocking here from the Centaur, so he doesn't get the curry here. But he really would have gotten a curry if he hadn't cancelled the first attack, so that definitely a mistake here from our Chen, our super, but um, of course also nicely played from Centaur, saving that situation. And right now just doing a lot of trading. Shadow Shaman has more damage than you do, but you have a lot more region, so you can definitely out-trade him if you do it smartly. He gets a courier, very importantly, gives himself some extra tangos to be being able to stay in this lane. And this Ursa is getting red low, but he's salving up. Takes a wild wing creep here. This creep is not particularly useful, but at least it's something. It does 30 damage. That is better than nothing. But of course, you don't want this to attack the sensor because, you know, you see, this creep did nothing. And now, Shadow Shaman going here on Ursa, but Ursa can escape, but he doesn't have any selves, so that's definitely a problem. Now Chen is level 3, so he can put a point into Penitence, which is going to do. I mean, normally, of course, he would take Holy Persuasion, but not super. They go on Ursa here, and there's not much that Chen can do in this situation. If you run in here, you're just going to get um, Hoof Summon as well, and you don't want that. So now Ursa can just CP back, or you can recall him. Either way is fine. And we see Chen here dewarding, also using a tango to deward so that he has this double duration tango now. You can do a lot of trading. And of course, Ursa still trading with the Centaur. And in this lane, Penance is actually quite useful for Ursa, just this extra slow is quite strong. But uh, I normally wouldn't level this up even in a lane like this, but like putting one point in here is, is quite nice actually. And so, his last hit goes to Chen, and they get a nice kill. Now they can go on the Centaur, he's alone, so he definitely can't fight here. And also, of course, quite strong against Centaur. And they're chasing down the trees, Centaur trying to juke them. Because he has a lot of stacks on him now. But Shadow Shaman comes and saves the day. Still a very good trade, obviously. You see how much mana the Shadow Shaman already had to spend. And the Centaur is uh, quite low, despite his salve. And now they should be able to get at least um, this one bounty rune. So they're going on the Centaur again. Both heroes here getting quite low. Uh, but the Centaur dies first and Ursa survives. And the Shadow Shaman now is trying to go for this kill, which is, I think, quite uh, foolish. He should just go, go away. And he does. And Chen chases him and gets in a couple of nice hits. This range group is really good for last hitting when it says you're going to go for this Shadow Shaman. And Chen being shackled here, but this Shadow Shaman is so low. And Ursa with this very nice Urshox jump can secure the kill. And the Shadow Shaman also has to run away. So, what is the point of this Penitence Max? Penance is actually an ability that scales really well. The bonus attack speed scales linearly, also, the duration goes up. And um, that just means that this ability, if you can get it maxed out early, is very very strong. 120 attack speed level 7 is quite amazing. He goes for this cold form now and uh, this allows him to escape. This extra movement speed from this creep, 12%, is quite significant. And yeah, Chen survives. So as I was saying, Penitence, really strong actually. It's just without those creeps, you don't really have um, much of a use for this attack speed. It only benefits your allies and not your creeps. And this attack speed is especially strong on creeps because they have no additional attack speed on their own, so it just increases their DPS by 
120%. Shen is now taking over a set of banisher. This is uh, not a particularly strong creep, but it has some use. And they're going with this centaur. And this creep could now perch him to slow him. Doesn't do that. That's a slight mistake here. And centaur is going to go and TP out. I don't, I don't think so. We've gotten the kill if he had perched there, but um, it would have been a lot closer. So normally in Chen, you want to just rush this mech, but instead he's going for this buckler and this spassy. And what he's going to do with this is he's going to build a Vlance. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think probably the reason is that Ursa just wants this Vlance to be able to do Roche. I think that's the main reason to build that here. But generally going for mech first is the preferred option. Flats is, is decent on Chen, but it's not uh, an item you want to rush. Disruptor coming in here, very importantly staying on a vision until it's late for the enemy. Now they go in the center and a nice fight breaks out, but there's also reinforcements coming in here. Crystal Maiden has her spells here, and very importantly you can actually purge off all the Maiden spells with this set of Banisher. So here we can purge this, doesn't do that, instead purges the Maiden for some slow, that's also a viable choice, and they get this main killed, but they would have gotten that probably either way. Hello. Yeah, it's, it's very important to keep in mind when you have this creep, uh, which spells can be purged and which can't. So you can purge the Frostbite, you can purge the slow from the, um, the Nova, but you cannot purge this uh, Stampede, and so there was no escaping for Chen here. But they're going here in the Shadow Shaman, which is on the tower here, so Arzo does not want to commit. Probably he gets the skill if he commits, but uh, it's not sure if he gets out again. And Asa's actually not doing all that well. If you look at the net worth here, it's actually behind Centaur and just generally quite low on net worth. He died three times. That's sort of the problem with Asa that you just need to go in there. Um, whereas Super on his Chen actually has two kills and only one death and uh, five assists. And with this build that Super has gone for, of course, you farm a lot slower. He's gotten a bunch of kills here, but uh, generally it's just you can. Easy to do these neutral creeps if you're a level 6 Shen. When you have three creeps, these creeps die really quickly, but as it is, it takes forever. And um, it's also a very mana intensive build because you just have to use this a lot. Also means that there's not very much you can do on your own. You very much depend on your team with this build. So they go for Sentinel here. Slow comes in here and Sentinel dies. Very nicely played here from both Ursa and Chen. So. You might think that the reason he's gone for this unusual build is because he has this Ursa and uh, they are a team that's low and disabled. But I've actually seen like th three recent games with Super and every game he's gone for this uh, Penitence Max build, regardless of what carry he has, regardless of what his team is doing. So this is an actual thing that Super is experimenting with. And I don't really think it's particularly strong, but... Um, it is good enough to win here one of these games. Let's see, this is a, I think, 7.5k game. So it can work here, it can definitely work in your lower level pubs. And so if, you, if you're if you not very confident in your micro and like you get Chen in like a SD game or something like that, you can go for this build. It's not terrible. And you can play Chen and you can have access to this Divine Favor and so on, this healing but not having to micro very much. And Cheng has gone on here, and there's not much that Ursa can do here to do to save him. All that Cheng can do is run, but it's not going to help him. But there's a response here coming in from Doom. They have the Sensor Doomed, and they're trying to chase him. It's not that easy though. But, yeah, he's eventually going to die here. But there's a lot of commitment, obviously. But it's not quite over yet. TA comes in with that trap, slows down Doom, and nice shackle coming out from Shadow Shaman. TA is also quite low, so she has to watch out and it gets killed. And with Chen coming in again, they have this uh, lads now, gives them some sustain, and they're getting a lot of follow up kills here. That's one of the perks of having a disruptor in your team. You can just get all of these follow up kills thanks to your glimpse. And now they've gotten. So many kills here, all the losses Chen. And this build that Chen has gone for is actually an ideal Roaching build. You have this Flads, which gives you lifesteal so that Ursa can sustain, and you have this Penitence maxed down, which gives 120 attack speed, which of course is very strong against Roshan. 
and allows us to do roche much quicker but the problem is you need to have something that can actually uh, pop the spell block from Roshan. But first of all, you have a fight here in the middle. Very classic fight here. Disruptor gets killed and Ursa has to retreat. There's no fighting against these wards at this stage of the game. And with Sir Pete coming in, Ursa is in big trouble. RP gets used and there's a kill. But Shadowfiend gets a kill here on Maiden. And it's still not quite clear who's coming on top here. But it looks like there's no more kills. Maybe Chandis gets killed. Yeah, I don't really want to commit here against this high ground. So it was a 2 for one exchange. Definitely very favorable for the Dyer. Right now it's rushing time. Ursa goes in here. And Chen has a creepier that can pop a Roshan. But he forgot about it a little bit. And now it's coming in. It gets a slow in here. But the creeper fortunately dies to Magnus and Roshan. But they get some kills. So that's alright then. Unfortunately they have nothing to pop this um, Roshan spell block. Um, there it is, spell block. So they can actually use this penitence, but uh, still this Roshan goes quite quickly, but with this it would go even more quickly. And there Roshan falls and actually Shadow Fiend gets the Aegis. Shadow Fiend is 3 no, so I guess that makes sense. If you have the skill streaks you want to protect them. And Chen now, of course, going for mech. He's flying out a Boots of Speed. Boots of Speed is an item that is not particularly important on Chen. You can definitely skip it in the early game, as he's done. But at some point, you want your boots. And after getting after Vlad's going for another big item, and then going for boots is a bit late. So I think it makes a perfect sense to go for boots now. What I don't like about Super's item build is he hasn't gotten a stick. Stick or Wand is just such an efficient item on basically any hero and it's even more efficient on Chen because you have this bonus from Divine Favor. But a lot, I see actually you see a lot of Chen players skipping Stick or Wand which I just don't understand at all. It's such a good item and I think you should almost never skip it. So now they're going for this tower very responsibly here tanking the tower shots to keep the catapult alive. And now this tower is going to be theirs. Unfortunately, Chen does not get the last hit, but at least they get a tower. And here you see some of the effects of uh, skipping this Holy Persuasion. He had a really good net at the start, but now it's kind of fallen off. And um, this is uh, because he just can't farm really with this build. All you have to farm, like you can of course use penance to farm, but it's not very efficient. It's much more fit just to use uh, big creeps to farm. And Chen can actually farm quite well by position 5 standards but not if you go for this build. Also, by the way, he meant for a second point here in Holy Persuasion. This is very important because a lot of the important creeps, like for example this Alpha Wolf, are level 4. And actually, most of the strongest late game creeps are actually level 3 or 4 creeps. So, if you're not getting this level 3 and 4 at the start, as you should, basically always, then it makes sense to leave it at 2 points and then max the Divine Favor as a second spell. But you definitely want that second point so that you can take over wolves, which is one of the most important creeps and also a creep that's quite easy on the micro. Right now the Radiant is quite strong, so the Seeker fights here. The Doom is a bit far forward here. And he gets shackled, he gets Ewart back here, gets RP's. And he's very tanky, but he still falls in the end. But they also get a Magnus kill, Magnus buys back immediately. And so they have to run now. Uh, because it's not a fight they can take anymore. And Disruptor gets gone on here. They're trying to, to kill him off. It's He's not making it easy with this static field here. But nice blink forward here from Centaur. Gets the kill and Centaur survives. Long lane shackle here thanks to the Ether Lens. And some nice curing here. As, uh, he's heating up thanks to that lifesteal from Vlad. But this is not a fight that... The Radiant can win. So four down despite this buyback. It was very much worth it for the Dio. It's quite clear from watching him that Super is not a player that's very confident in this micro. But he's found ways of playing Chen despite that and he's just using these very simple micro techniques. So he's gotten a little sensor, he's just parked this in Roshan because just scouting Roshan is very important and just generally 
This is a creep that's fairly easy to control, you just have to have it like, somewhere in your team. And then he has this Alpha Wolf that's just following the Shadow Fiend. And this is a pretty good fight here for the Radiance. They get this glimpse kill here, and despite what's being used here, they can easily get a kill. By the way, if the Shaman were smart, he would have focused those wards on the Alpha Wolf. This ward's still piercing damage, so the bonus damage to, to the Wolf. But, um, and also this Wolf only has 8 on HP, because the Chen only has level 2 in Holy Stage, so it actually dies quite quickly. But now, you see another fight here coming in, and there's not very much that Radiant can do right now, because they're down 2 people, and thanks to Vlad's, everyone here on the Radiant team is quite healthy. So they take down the Rexus, and Rain Track still remaining, but this dies quite quickly. Even Ursa does actually a respectable amount of rocket damage to these buildings. Last this year for Chen, and now they can retreat. I'm not sure what he's, where he's sitting around here, maybe he's baiting. He actually uses Essence Ring here proactively, and it gets gone on. There's so much HP though that he, they can't kill him. And the Centaur is not long for this world. And down he goes. But Shadow Shaman also coming in here. Not the best to drop the ultimate, but um, they do get the kill. And now there's another two heroes dead, and everyone on the Radiant team is alive and well. So Hycon push time. They try to take another lane of Rex here. The tower goes down, and there's still 15 seconds here on the center, so they definitely get at least the melee Rex. And maybe the range Rex also. Looks like they don't really want to contest that. So that's two lanes down. If you want to know how to throw, this is a good example here. They've gotten on the attractors they came for, and they're going for, the, for a fight here under the tier falls, next to the fountain. And if they win this fight, maybe they can win, end the game. But uh, like this is so foolhardy. It's uh, there's no reason to take this fight. They had the objective. They could have just gone back and rode out an easy victory, but instead they had to make this uh, semi fountain diving play here, and they got punished for that. So now they see with the center course here that TA is going for Roche and it's very difficult for them to contest this. They still have a couple of seconds here before they respawn and they're trying to stop this somehow maybe but um, it's difficult. TA of course is also quite a fast Roche, not as fast as Ursa but still fast. Shadow Shaman trying to go here for the Shadow Fiend and Roshan has been claimed with he being in here and Chen is in here as well, but it's a bit, a bit far forward here, but thanks to this Essence Ring is quite tanky. Should maybe use that right now. He gets it out, but he's skewered in here, found it deep, and he dies. So, some really nice throwing here, but they also get the TA, and they got her Aegis as well. And right now, this looks like a throwback. The Radiant have now hopefully learned their lesson, and they're now pushing this tier 2 tower, like good little boys. Chen takes over the Banisher here, Banisher actually quite strong, there's a lot of th stuff you can dispel here. And he doesn't find anything good here, he's looking for something like a Alpha Wolf or an Ogre, which of course would be excellent here. But doesn't find it, and unfortunately for them, Magnus is creep cutting, and they don't have any waves here, so this push is over. Dyer come out to play, and Ursa is in the middle of it. He has BKB now, now after his basher. He's quite strong, but doesn't actually get his BKB off. It's a bit unfortunate. And so, they just have to retreat here. They go up to this high ground, and they want to wait here for someone to come up. But... No one comes, and now is the time to go back. But Doom actually doesn't feel like it. Doom thinks they're stronger. And this is a rather foolhardy move, they're down a player, they're down their carry, and they just walk in here, 4 vs 5, underneath the enemy high ground. And this fight does not go well for them at all. They can get this Magnus kill here, but um, they're 2 down already, and they just have to reveal in this fight, there's just no way they can fight this. And everything's dying here, Shadow Fiend can maybe get out of here, but... Yeah, he and Doom, he and Doom escape, but this is definitely 
very much a one fight. Actually, this was actually quite of kind of close. Um, in terms of gold exchange, was it a buyback or something? I'm not sure. But um, yeah, this is not the kind of fights you want to take. If you're ahead like this, you don't have to take these these bad fights. You can just wait to take a better fight. You can wait for Rosha and maybe even. But these are not the fights you want to take. You don't want to fight four versus five underneath the enemy high ground. Let's talk about items a little bit. So we have, of course, Mech. After this, Vlad's. And then the next item he's gone for is Medallion. A medallion into Solar Crest. Solar Crest, of course, is very strong if you have these kinds of heroes that uh, benefit from both the armor and the attack speed. That is mostly heroes who are like frontliners and still right clickers. And of course, Ursa is a good example of that. Ursa, as long as he has his uh, overpower on, attack speed isn't very important for him, but when the overpower wears off, attack speed is actually really strong on Ursa. So it's a nice bonus to give to Ursa, and of course it also gives extra move speed. And you have this active on Ursa. And of course Shadowfiend also benefits a lot from Crest. He has a lot of damage, but not a lot of attack speed, so having this extra 80 attack speed is quite nice. Another little kill here for the, the Radiant, and this again is going to make them push here. They're looking for enemies here, and they find Centaur. Centaur is dead. And did not get his cheese off, and probably was a good idea that he didn't um, use it because he would have died after that again, probably. And now, of course, high ground push is in the cards. You see one buyback here coming out of Maiden. But of course, his Doom is very tanky, he has so much armor. Look at this, all his armor from the Shiva's Guard and the Dragon Scale, and of course, the Face Boots. As Chen, you're not really contributing very much to this fight. You just have this helmet basically, but the helmet should not be that far forward. The helmet should be a bit uh, farther back. So this is going to die now. And now you lose this magic resistance. But it doesn't really matter very much. You know, Chen doesn't contribute very much to this fight. His team certainly do. And Chen is mostly just there, providing some auras. Nice RP here from Magnus, but uh, this damage is just not there. And that is going to be the end of this game. So, should you go for this build with the Penance Max? Probably not. And you saw that in the team fight, he's not really doing very much with this build. Whereas if you have more creeps, you have more ores to provide to your team, and you can also just farm quicker. Which I had a really fast start. He had as much farm as the Ursa almost in the laying stage. But now it's just fallen off completely. Which of course is uh, in large part because he just didn't have those creeps to farm. So this is not a build I would recommend, but if you're really struggling with Micro and you're playing Chen for whatever reason, this is something you can do. Um, and it's still like reasonably uh, playable for Chen. So definitely a build you can keep in mind, but I don't see this becoming the new meta on Chen. If you liked this video, please share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, join the fold by subscribing and clicking the bell button. And if you want to see some more sane Chen play, I recommend you watch this video where I go into all the item and skill build choices for Chen for players who are not microly impaired and actually max out their persuasion first. And Obelis willing, I'll see you there.